Well, joining us uh, live uh, from London is Antoine Roger Le Congo, uh, a London-based Congolese journalist. Uh, Antoine Roger Le Congo, uh, there are reports that Rwanda is supporting Laurent Nkunda, uh, despite him denying this. And of course, the United States continues to support Rwanda. What's the connection between the United States, Rwanda, and Laurent Nkunda? Yes. Uh, first of all, Nkunda is a, an officer of the Rwandan army. He is not a Congolese. And I have my facts for that. Even Jota, Jonathan Clayton wrote in the Times last week, the Times of London, confirming what I'm saying now, that Nkunda is an, an, a, a Tutsi officer of the Rwandan army being used in Congo for what he's doing now. He's not Congolese. And then uh, Sam, Sam Kelly, who is also a, a top uh, investigative journalist from Channel 4, confirmed that in Parliament, I attended that meeting, he confirmed that Nkunda is not Congolese. So what happened? Why is America supporting uh, Rwanda? Well, it started with the genocide in '94. America could have intervened to stop the genocide. They didn't. With that guilt, they support Rwanda now, and Rwanda under the pretext of pursuing those who committed genocide, who are allegedly hiding in Congo, invaded Congo, but the motive was to loot mineral, rape and kill, and five million people have been killed in Congo since 98, and America knows that. So this whole war is a pretext because President Kagame of Rwanda was prepared in a military academy in Akasa, Bill Clinton's home. He was prepared to play the role he's now playing in the Great Lake region, and he will answer for all these crimes he's committing in the name of Americans, for, for the sake of American interest. That's the fact. You said Laura Nakunda wasn't Congolese, because he was a general in the Congolese army and helped overthrew, overthrew uh, Mobutu with uh, Laurent Kabila? Yeah, he is not a Congolese. He's not, he was born in Rwanda. And then when his parents fled uh, the recurrent uh, uh, killings between Hutu and Tutsi, they came to Congo and then they went back to Rwanda. And even Jonathan Clayton of the Times confirms that. Yes, and that's another fallacy. When Laurent Kabila overthrew Mobutu, he had 47,000 men, Congolese. He needed the support of 3,000 uh, Rwandan and Ugandan officers who were training Laurent Kabila's 47,000 men. Okay, Can you uh, believe what the okay, 3,000 I, I men? How could they have... Uh, uh, overthrown Mobutu with 3,000 men only, Rwanda and Uganda. Okay, That's away from the history, life. away from the history, of course, the United Nations in the past few hours uh, has issued a statement, the mission there, the largest uh, UN mission in the world, uh, has issued a statement criticizing Joseph Kabila, Laurent's uh, son, of course, saying his army is responsible for looting and rape in several towns in uh, eastern parts of the country. Uh, that is, that if that information is just coming through now. I haven't been in touch uh, with uh, my people on the ground yet, but it sounds like a diversion because uh, the UN has always been on the side of Nkunda and the Rwanda. And uh, in your, my, your previous program, I gave you several facts. Of now, course, no, I, I want to go, I wanna go through those facts. Massacre. I want to go through those Nkunda, facts. I want to go through those facts, but your initial take on that statement from the United Nations, I mean, they have 17,000 troops there. They want more. Do you think the United Nations will be helpful in this conflict if they're making statements no, against... No, not at all. This war would have finished long ago if the UN deployed the 17,000 men along the border of Congo with the Rwanda, Burundi, and the Uganda. Then Rwanda would have feel secure because UN troops are on the border and the people of Rwanda is accusing of 
planning another genocide hiding in Congo would have not done so because UN troops are deployed along the border. But okay. now we have the Southern African Development Community, Angola, Mozambique, Zimbabwe. They are now ready to send troops along the border of Congo uh, and, and of course, and that would widen Uganda. So that that's that the would widen way the, forward now. That would widen the conflict and uh, create uh, some say terrible consequences. Just remind us, just to finish off, uh, why everyone in the world, nearly uh, well, a lot of the world, takes a bit of Congo with them. Um, Eighty percent, uh, most of the world's coltan for uh, iPods, mobile phones. Why? Why do you think everyone uh, who carries a mobile phone is implicated yes. in this war in Congo? Yes, because, uh, because uh, as I said, this war is going on and on because of uh, a strategic interest. They don't want to finish it off because the whole world needs mineral from Congo, especially coltan, the strategic mineral that we need, the West and the whole world needs uh, in the high-tech industry for mobile phones, laptops, satellites, basically everything high-tech. So... That's why the world doesn't want this war to finish. And with the credit crunch, everybody's again looking to Congo to loot those minerals to solve the problem here. And, and that's why Britain and America are backing the Tutsi, because the Tutsi are looting in Congo and bringing this wealth to uh, Anglo-Saxon countries. That's a fact. Kagame has just launched a stock exchange in, in Kigali. But Rwanda has no minerals. And you understand why Tony Blair has become Kagame's special advisor. What's going on? And well, now, today, the UN accuses Kabila soldiers of looting just like Kunda. That is a diversion to make the international community forget the massacre Kunda has just committed. And well, if thank the Congolese you. soldiers 